In this lecture, we're going to look at the lumbosacral plexus. So we'll look at the lumbar plexus, the sacral plexus, and the coccygeal plexus, with all of these constituting the lumbosacral plexus. Contributions for the lumbar plexus are from T12, L1, L2, L3, and L4. Sacral plexus, we have contributions from L4 all the way down through to S4, and this is important as it gives rise to the sciatic nerve. And then the coccygeal plexus, which is coming from S4, S5, and the one coccygeal spinal cord segment. So let's look at the lumbar plexus first of all. And this, as we can see on the screen at the moment, it gives rise to a whole series of nerves. We can see the lumbar plexus coming down here, giving rise to a whole series of nerves that are going to supply structures in the abdominal wall and also in the thigh. So the lumbar sacral plexus is part of the lumbar plexus, also the sacral plexus and the coccygeal plexus. It is analogous to the brachial plexus in the upper limb in that it gives nerves towards the musculature of the lower limb to supply the various compartments and it also receives sensory information from the lower limb that pass back towards the spinal cord. Just like the upper limb, sympathetic fibres join the lumbar sacral plexus and this is taking sympathetic fibres towards the body wall and this is passing to the lumbar plexus, lumbar sacral plexus by way of the grey rami communicants, just the same way as they did for the upper limb. So if we start by looking at the lumbar sacral plexus, then we can see the lumbar plexus is formed from T12 down to L4, so T12 all the way down to L4. Spinal cord nerves leaving from these spinal cord segments from the lumbar plexus. Then the sacral plexus all the way down from L4 to S4, or sometimes the first coccygeal, the only coccygeal segment. And then the coccygeal plexus, S4, S5, and the only coccygeal segment, which we can see here. So these three plexi together form the lumbosacral plexus. If we look at the lumbar plexus in situ, then we can see we have a whole series of nerves radiating from the lumbar region of the spinal cord. Here we've got the lumbar vertebrae. We can see the sympathetic chain running along, and we can see these l large nerves passing out. We can see we have a whole series of nerves, and these nerves are important because they supply the muscles in the lower limb, which we're going to talk about in the next few lectures. So let's go through them. Lumbar plexus L1 to L4. Obturator nerve. This is coming from L2, L3, and L4. The obturator nerve, you can see the obturator nerve passing down here on the right-hand side, and you can see the obturator nerve being formed here and running all the way down. The obturator nerve leaves through the obturator foramen in the pelvis, and it goes to supply the medial compartment of the thigh, so the adductor compartment of the thigh. The femoral nerve comes from the same root values as the obturator, so L2, L3, L4. The femoral nerve also comes from L2, L3, L4, and we can see the femoral nerve here. The femoral nerve is passing underneath psoas major muscle, which we can see here. So the femoral nerve is just passing underneath psoas major, which we can see here. We can pick up the femoral nerve on this side. Again, we can see the various spinal nerves forming the femoral nerve, and the femoral nerve passes into the anterior compartment of the thigh by passing deep to the inguinal canal, the inguinal ligament. And we'll look at this in more detail when we look at the anterior aspect of the thigh in a later lecture. But the femoral nerve passes deep to the inguinal canal, the inguinal ligament, to enter the anterior compartment of the thigh. The other nerve we want to see here is the lumbosacral trunk. The lumbosacral trunk is coming from L4 and L5, and this is important as it actually descends down to form the sacral plexus. So here we can see the sacral plexus, and running down we have the lumbosacral trunk. Coming from L4 and L5, this is taking information from the lumbar region 
down into the sacral plexus. So you have the communication now between the lumbar plexus and the sacral plexus. And that's why the lumbar sacral trunk, which we can see running down here. If we then carry on looking at the nerves for the lumbar plexus, we have the iliohypogastric and the ili ilioinguinal nerves. These come from L1, the ilioinguinal and the iliohypogastric nerves. We can see them coming up quite high up. They pierce quadratus lumborum, which is this muscle here, and they come out from the same spinal cord segment, which is L1, and they run around the lateral aspect of the abdominal wall. So they run in between transverse abdominus and internal oblique muscles, and they go and supply the pubic and inguinal regions. Running on the anterior surface of psoas major, we find the genitofemoral nerve. The genitofemoral nerve originating from L1 and L2. And sometimes these nerves are actually together, and as we can see on this side, and they pass as a common trunk and then split. Or on this side, we can see we've got two trunks which are passing through psoas major. It's not necessarily important, but the genitofemoral nerve. The genital branch, which is not particularly important for this course, supplies the skin of the genitalia and it passes through the inguinal canal, it enters the inguinal canal via the deep inguinal ring, and we can see it passing out of the spermatic cord here. And also we have the femoral branch of the genitofemoral nerve, and this supplies a small patch of skin on the anterior thigh. We can just see it passing out here, the genitofemoral nerves, femoral branches. We also have the lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh, the lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh coming from L2 and L3. We can see it here, passing from deep to psoas major, passing all the way out here. And this is coming from L2, L3. It supplies a small patch on the anterolateral aspect of the thigh. So now let's move on to the sacral and the coccygeal plexi. These two plexus, plexi, the sacral and the coccygeal, with the sacral really overlapping the coccygeal plexus, coming from L4 all the way down really to the only coccygeal spinal cord segment. And the main nerve to come from this plexus is the sciatic nerve. The sciatic nerve is a big nerve, it's about two centimeters wide. The sciatic nerve comes from L4, L5, S1, S2, and S3. We can see the sciatic nerve here. It's actually got two parts to it. It's got the common fibular nerve and it's got the tibial nerve. And these two nerves, although separate, are bound together to form the sciatic nerve. It runs down the posterior aspect of the thigh and it supplies all the flexors of the knee and all the muscles of the leg and foot. So the sciatic nerve is really, really important. Within it are two nerves, the common fibula and the tibial nerve, and we'll learn more about their supply later on. Here we can see the tibial nerve and the common fibula nerve, but together they supply all of the musculature of the lower limb, except the gluteal region, the anterior thigh, and the medial thigh. So the posterior components of the thigh all of the leg and all of the foot are supplied by the sciatic nerve. Here we can see from the sacral plexus we have a pudendal nerve. The pudendal nerve is really important. It's coming from S2, S3, S4. Here we can see the pudendal nerve, and that's supplying all structures in the perineum. So all of the sphincters in the perineum, all of the erectile tissue of the perineum is supplied by the pudendal nerve, S2, S3, and S4. Also from the sacral plexus, we have the superior gluteal nerve. We can see the superior gluteal nerve here, coming from L4, L5, and S1. This supplies gluteus medius, gluteus minimus, and the tensor fascia lata muscle, the superior gluteal nerve. We have a superior gluteal nerve, which means we're also going to have an inferior gluteal nerve. And the inferior gluteal nerve specifically supplies gluteus maximus. It comes from L5, S1, S2, and here we can see the inferior gluteal nerve just here. These two nerves, superior and inferior gluteal nerve, pass out of the pelvis via the greater sciatic foramen, 
either side of piriformis. So superior gluteal nerve passes out above piriformis, inferior gluteal nerve passes out inferior to piriformis. That brings me to what's called nerve to piriformis. This is a small nerve that just supplies piriformis. So nerve to piriformis S1 and S2. We then have nerve to the other muscles of the lower limb, these lateral rotators, which we'll talk about. Nerve to quadratus femoris and the superior and inferior gemelli. These are coming from L4, L5, S1, S2. Very small nerves that just pass to these muscles. We also have what's known as the posterior femoral cutaneous nerve. And this nerve runs alongside the sciatic nerve. It contains cutaneous branches of the buttock and the posterior thigh. It comes from S2 and S3. The sciatic nerve, as I mentioned, is really important. So I just want to dwell on it for a second. Anterior divisions of the anterior rami from these nerve roots form the tibial nerve and the posterior divisions of these anterior nerve roots form the common fibular nerve. So here we've got L4, L5, S1, S2, S3. Anterior rami from these split into these anterior divisions and it's these anterior divisions that form the tibial nerve. So here we can see the tibial nerve here. And we can see coming out here, we've got L4, L5, S1, S2, and S3. And coming from them, we can see they're splitting into these anterior divisions. Not these posterior divisions down here, these anterior divisions here. See another one here. See another one here. And it's these anterior divisions of the anterior rami from L4, L5, S1, 2, 3, that forms the tibial nerve. The posterior divisions of some of these nerve roots, L4, L5, S1, S2, the posterior divisions, if we go back to them, see L5 here is giving rise to this anterior division and a posterior division. And this posterior division here, see another posterior division here, see another posterior division here. These are giving rise to the common fibular nerve. So these have very similar spinal cord segments but they're dividing into these anterior and posterior divisions. The anterior divisions giving rise to the tibial nerve, the posterior divisions giving rise to the common fibular nerve. A similar principle that we had for the brachial plexus. The sciatic nerve is the largest nerve in the body. It's about two centimeters wide. And as I mentioned, it supplies the majority of the muscles in the lower limb, except the gluteal region, the anterior thigh, and the medial thigh. It's so big that it actually has its own artery and this is artery to the sciatic nerve and this artery comes from the inferior gluteal artery. We'll see these when we look at the gluteal region. So briefly then to finish just the coccygeal plexus and this really is just the coccygeal nerve. The coccygeal nerve which gives rise to nerve to levator ani and nerve to coccygeus coming really from S3 S4. And these are supplying the muscles of the pelvic floor. You also have the anococcygeal nerve that's coming from the only coccygeal segment. And this anococcygeal nerve goes on to supply the skin between the coccyx and the anus. So we have the coccygeal um, plexus, which is containing the only one coccygeal spinal cord segment, and the two superior ones, S5, S4. And these are supplying the coccygeal nerve to levator ani and coccygeus muscle, these muscles that form the pelvic floor. So in this lecture, we've looked at the lumbar plexus and its nerves, the obturator, femoral, lumbar sacral trunk, iliohypogastric and ilioinguinal nerves, genitofemoral, and the lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh. We then looked at the sacral plexus, where it gives rise to the sciatic, the pudendal, superior, inferior gluteal nerves, nerve to piriformis, quadratus femoris, and nerve to the gemelli, as well as the posterior femoral cutaneous nerve. And then we look specifically at the formation of the sciatic nerve. We then finish by looking at the coccygeal plexus and how its coccygeal segment and some superior segments give rise to nerves that go and supply levator ani, and coccygeus muscle, and also the anococcygeal nerve.